One of the key tools you'll need to be able to navigate as you are computing mass moments of inertia of different solids is essentially a table just like this one here. Now this is a little bit more in the form of a figure, but essentially it is a series of shapes. We have a sphere, a cylinder, a slender rod, a thin circular disc, a thin plate, and a thin ring. And for each of these, we have mass moment of inertia equations. Now these mass moment of inertia equations have come from the integrals of these different shapes. So essentially taking that integral of r squared dm, and they've come up with these consistent equations. So we can think that for a sphere, it doesn't matter what axes you're looking at. Now all three of these are going through its centroid. We're gonna use 2 fifths mr squared. The cylinder is gonna vary according to whether your axis is coming through the side of the cylinder, either x or y, or coming down through the middle, which is going to be z. And so there's going to be two different equations there. A slender rod has the exact same equation either about this x-axis or also for the y-axis. Now if you take a look here about the izz, it is zero. Okay, so there's no moment of inertia for a slender rod about the length of that rod. So if we spin that rod along its lawn axis, there's no resistance to rotation. Now there is a secondary equation here for the slender rod for a different set of axes. Okay, these secondary axes here are about the end point. So instead of being the 1 12th ml squared about the center, we have 1 3rd ml squared about the end, noting that 1 3rd is a bigger value than 1 12th. We said that the moment inertia increases the further from the centroid that we get. We have a similar situation over here for the thin circular disk where we have uh, uniform equations are the same equation about the x-axis centroidal, also the y-centroidal axes. About the z-axis coming through the middle, we have a separate equation, and a separate one again if we rotate this thin circular disk about this edge. Uh, let's take a look at the thin ring, then I'll come back to the thin plate as our last one. So the thin ring, we can rotate it about its center, or we can rotate it kind of like you'd flip a coin um, through the air, we'd be rotating about either the x-axis or the y-axis. To get a little bit more definition, let's go ahead and look at the thin plate. So the thin plate actually has three different equations depending on whether we are rotating about an axis going through the long edge, uh, an axis going through the short edge, which would be um, the y-axis going through the distance a, or spinning it about the z-axis. And so to take a look at those, here's a little video that you can watch to get a better idea of the different axes when we're talking about rotating. So here's a clipboard representing that rectangle. Here we see the long edge B, the shorter edge A, and then also a thickness. If we think about rotating this clipboard about the x-axis, centroidal x-axis, it would be like this. About the centroidal y-axis coming down through distance A, it would be about that axis here. And then about the z centroidal axis would be going right through the middle here. It would be spinning about that point. Okay, so the resistance rotation about those three separate axes. We can also shift these axes using the parallel axis theorem. Let's say if we shift it from the middle down to the bottom edge, we'd find a greater moment of inertia to resist rotation around that bottom edge. We could also shift it to the left edge, like opening like a book, a greater moment of inertia about the left edge than the center. Or from the middle, we could say shift it up to the top and find a larger moment of inertia of this shape around that top z axis versus the center. Hope that helps. So when you're faced with a composite body problem, you will need to visit this table and essentially pull different equations off of this table and use them in your composite body computations. Just make sure you analyze which is the correct axis. It's really key to make sure you pull the correct equation off of this table to match up with the axes about which you're trying to rotate or resist rotation in your overall problem. Thanks for your attention today. I hope this helped out.